Hi, welcome to the Carla Knits podcast. Today is episode 19 and it is Friday, July 2nd. Uh, welcome to all returning viewers. And if you're new for the first time, thanks for stopping by and checking this podcast out. Uh, this pod podcast is about knitting and crocheting and all of the yarny things that I love. Uh, I hope you all have been well this week. Uh, let's get into some chatting. Uh, last week, I on episode 18, I announced the winners of the Spring Stripes Make Along and also the 400 subscriber giveaway. Uh, and the 400 subscriber winner uh, has contacted me. And two of the three Spring Stripes winners have contacted me and their yarn has gone out in the mail. So just a little note here, if you participated in the Spring Stripes Make Along uh, in our Ravelry group, uh, please go ahead and check episode 18 out to see if you are that third winner. All right, uh, show notes for this podcast can be found down below as well as where you can find me on social media. I am CB Crafty Girl on Instagram and Ravelry. And we do have a podcast group on Ravelry. My Santa hat is slipping. We have a podcast group, a group for our podcast on Ravelry. And we finished that Spring Stripes Make Along. And now uh, our next Make Along began actually yesterday on July 1st. This is a, we're calling it Merry Make Along 2021. It runs from July 1st through August 31st, and it's uh, for anything you want to knit, crochet, sew, weave, anything you would like to make uh, as gifts for people for Christmas, or maybe something for yourself for Christmas. Um, just a good way to maybe knock a couple gifts out uh, early, early, so we're not all scrambling in November and December. Um, so I have uh, started a couple things that I'll be anxious to show you today and I'm wearing my festive hat just to get us in that uh, merry festival <laughs> Christmassy mood. Um, I'd like to channel some of those cold cold thoughts because it's it's warm here. <laughs> I think if you follow me for a while I you probably have heard me say it's warm here in Nebraska <laughs> during the summer. Um, so details on on this Merry Make Along can be found uh, in the Ravelry group. Uh, I did open a chatter thread, unfortunately, and I had, have had it open for a while, but I didn't put chatter on it, so maybe that's why nobody has chattered. But I corrected that, so now if you go in our Ravelry group, you will see Merry Make Along and chatter thread, and then you will also see a finished object thread. So I would love it if you guys would get um, some things in the chatter thread. Uh, if you have uh, some great project ideas for people, uh, you know, patterns that you have loved making in the past for gifts, you know, that, that would be great. Or just share what you are planning to make uh, for, for the holiday season. So again, chatter thread open finished object thread open and I am hosting this on Instagram as well so when the final when we have come to the end of this make along I will be drawing a prize from the chatter thread and the finished object thread on Ravelry and then I will be choosing a winner from the Instagram hashtag Merry Make Along 2021. So if you'd like to post your um, finished objects over there or your works in progress, that would be great. Just make sure to tag me so that I make sure that I see, see those. And I will be showing prizes uh, in the coming weeks that I am collecting for the Merry Make Along. All right. I think that's all of our information that I got to talk about right now, our administrative stuff. So let's get into some knitting. So I do have... A finished object today and these are my belladonna socks this was a pattern by Ghazal Muhammad and the yarn I used is mustache yarn must stash yarn in the Hogwarts colorway and then the purple is Camelot dye works uh, in the full moon colorway and I really love how that purple picks up on those purple or violet uh, specks 
in in the yarn so there is a completed pair of shorty socks uh, the texture was really fun to work on cabling without a cable needle so that was a new technique for me and i i really enjoyed it so uh, that is my finished object for today i have a half object so i have one sock here this is the pair of socks or this is the yarn that i'm using to make a pair of socks uh my first entry for the crazy sock ladies uh summer sock camp uh, and so i i have completed the first sock the main color yarn is by the woolen homestead in atop the ferris wheel later renamed uh county fair sunset yarn i love how this yarn knit up it is so pretty and then the contrasting yarn for the heel and toe is Knit Pick Stroll in the Pucker colorway. So that is my half object for today. So you can see lots of sock knitting has been, has been happening here. So that leads us into whips. And I have started, a little twisted here, I have started on that second sock. I have the cuff done and I am on the heel flap and gusset. So that's as far as I am on that second sock. And this is the only sock I currently have on my needles right now. So I will have to get another pair on really soon. But pretty good. A finished pair of socks, one finished sock, and already started on this. So I'm really happy. Uh, with how that is going and I absolutely love that yarn all right uh, so that was my first whip that sock and then I will show this I hope you're not getting tired of seeing this but oops this is my sweater this is the autumn league pullover by two of wands I am making this uh, as part of a knit along hosted by strings attached. The yarn I'm using is Lion Brand Cotton Jeans yarn. And interesting construction, which I talked about on the sweater last week. So after, this, after the sleeves, you divided uh, and put on waist yarn for each sleeve and for the back. So it currently has no back, but I'm still working down the front. So where the progress keeper is is where i was last week when i showed it uh, i measured and i have about i think two more inches to go on the front before the ribbing um and the the knit along goes till the end of august so i feel like it's it's moving along pretty well so so yeah that is my progress on that sweater um let's see so my new cast ons uh really excited i was really anxious to start uh some christmas knitting or christmas yeah christmas knitting so i actually because i am allowing works in progress i actually started one of my christmas things on let's see wednesday this week so it was the last day of june but i figured that was okay <laughs> But let me show you the project bag. So I'm really getting in the Christmas theme here because um, I just think it's so much fun and I absolutely love Christmas. Um, so this is a project bag that was made for me by a friend, Ashley. We participated in uh, a Christmas project bag swap that was hosted by Deborah of the Meanwhile in the Castle podcast a couple of years back. And Ashley made this bag for me. And I, I'm, I am very sure the camera isn't going to pick this up, but the snowflakes are on top of a background that has musical notes on a staff. And so I thought that was just lovely. So Ashley knows that I am a musician. So the fabric she picked is just wonderful. Um, and that cute plaid down below and that sweet little uh, wooden Christmas tree button and a little jingle bell on the zipper pull. I just thought this was a lovely bag and a little trim there. So thanks again, Ashley. I do love this bag so much. So in this bag is my first thing that I am working on 
for for Christmas. Um, I don't have anybody specifically in mind for this, but it's something I just wanted to, to make. Uh, so right now it just maybe looks like a mess of <laughs> strings, but this is called Slip Into the Holidays Cowl. It is by Roving Fibers Adventures. And the yarn that I'm using is a mini skein set, which these are all caked up, but yeah, they're kind of messy here. My green and then this heavily speckled Christmas yarn. So this was a five, five skein set uh, by Gems Lux Fibers in the Home for the Holidays colorway. And I assume that this was designed with this cowl in mind or some kind of collaboration for that. Uh, the original pattern does not call for this uh, garter edge. It, call, it had you do, you can see the green here. Um, so it just had you do like one knit round and one purl round and then go into the design. And I didn't think that that was enough of a stable edge. So I, I had a pink, I don't know if the camera picks this up, a pink and white, pink, or cream with speckled pinks in there, which kind of remember, reminded me of peppermint. So I used that to make a garter stitch border or edge. Um, but now I am wondering if, if that is going to, you can see how it's kind of folding forward, but I am hoping with blocking that that will, that will iron that issue out. Uh, the, I don't know if you can see, there are slipped stitches in there uh, and they are they are pulled across several rows. And so that is pulling the fabric a bit. And I think that's part of the reason why that edge is slipped down. Um, but it's a really cute, cute pattern there that it's, that's developing and I really, really liked it. It's keeping my interest a lot with those slip stitches. The first section had one type of slip stitch pattern and then this next section has a different one. So it's really fun. So you're getting those color blips without doing color work, but with those uh, slip stitches. So I'm really enjoying that. I'm thinking if, if when I block this whole thing, cause I plan on doing this on the other end, if it does not work itself out, if it is still leaning forward, then I think I will fold it over and tack it down and that may that may help. So I've got a couple couple different thoughts. If blocking doesn't work, then I may tack, tack that garter ridge down. Um, but I'm really loving the colorway and you, you can't get more Christmassy <laughs> feeling than reds and greens. So that is really fun. Uh, my next Christmassy work in project progress uh, is also my last one for today. So I am really moving along quite fast here. Um, is in this bag. So let me hold this up. It has these darling little mice and ornaments. The mice are hanging on branches and there's pine cones. And this is just so sweet. It's a cute little bag that you can just up like that. Let me tell you who this is by. Uh, this is uh, from Etsy. It's Cottontail Farm VA uh, in Virginia. So Cottontail Farm VA is the, the company name. And I found this on Etsy. And I should say Ashley, who made that beautiful bag for me, does not have an Etsy shop. Um, but this, this bag was on Etsy. And I thought that was just so so adorable. I just love those sweet little mice, little Christmassy mice. So in this project bag uh, is a mitten. <laughs> so this is, I did start this yesterday on July 1st. Um, we had a little bit of a car ride. And so I started on this mitten. Jeff was driving. And this mitten is for Jeff, but he really didn't know what I was knitting on. So, <laughs> so that's, that's okay. Uh, this yarn is Cascades 220 Superwash. 
I knit a sweater in this earlier, let's see, or late last year, maybe I finished it into this year. Um, I knit my Weekender by Andre Mowry in this color. Uh, the color number is 296. It doesn't have a name, but it's kind of a forest, forest green or a heathered forest green colorway. I am using the World's Simplest Mitten pattern by Tin Can Knits. Uh, and if you've been with me for a while, you know I knit my first pair of mittens this year. So this is my second, and I love this pattern. It's going really well. I don't know what my hangup was on mittens because it's really not bad, very similar to a sock. Um, yeah, so I'm loving how this, this is working up. So Christmas gift for Jeff. So those are the two things I cast on new this week, Christmassy projects, and some new things will be coming up in, in the following weeks as we continue with our merry make along. All right, uh, let's get into, uh, I'll show you some things that showed up in my mailbox. Um, let me grab this back here. All right. Uh, I probably won't have any acquisitions after this for a while. Um, I was maybe a little, a little spendy in June, so <laughs> I'm going to try to be good now for a little while. Uh, these two beautiful skeins of yarn are by Weird Sisters Wool Emporium. I found them on Etsy. Uh, this first one, oh, I love it, that, that neon bright. It's so bright. It's called Neon Dream. Oh, and it's just so fun and it has sparkle in it. Yeah, just such a fun, bright, bright color. And then this other skein is called Yule Variegated, so Y-U-L-E, so kind of holiday themed. And it's on a sparkle base and those greens and some of those blues and grays. Oh, I just love that too. Such a good Christmassy feeling yarn. So again, that is Weird Sisters Wool Emporium. Uh, next, I have this, this is Darling. This is by Southern Storytime, and this yarn is called The Very Hungry Caterpillar. And it came with the Progress Keeper, this little book Progress Keeper. So it's based on the Eric Carl book, The Very Hungry Caterpillar. And if you know that book, you can see that those colors just couldn't be any better. It's just perfect for that. So it's got that little little caterpillar on the top or on the on the book there. So I just thought that was so sweet. So this Southern Storytime, she has several different children's books uh, that she has um, made into sock sets of yarn. So if you love children's books like I do, um, I have such good memories. I know I shared Chicka Chicka Boom Boom from Night Owl Fibers a while back. A while back. Um, yeah, these, this children's book, just so sweet. So that's gonna make a really pretty, pretty pair of socks. Um, this came as a set and I learned about this from Brenda on Night Owl Fibers podcast. It's a podcast with Brenda and her daughter, Rachel, who dyes yarn, beautiful self-striping yarn. And she, she had gotten this kit uh, and I just, I had to get it too. So it's a book and it has to do with a yarn store. I mean, there's a yarn store in the, in the background of this, of this book. I'm sure that's not the main thing but yarn store and excuse me, a little bit of romance in there. And so this yarn came with it. And this was from Arkansas Yarn Company. And if you, uh, I did check you, there are still, as of this morning, there were still, I think three kits available of this. And on, on the website photos, at least, on my phone or my tablet, uh, this is showing up as gray, but it's actually kind of a bluish, a bluish greenish color. It just, it really matches the spine of the book, which is kind of a bluish, bluish green or dusty blue green. Um, so that's, that's really the color. And then, and then it has these beautiful speckles 
Uh, this, this comes on the website or you can find it on Kathleen Fuller's website. So this book is called Hooked on You by Kathleen Fuller. On her website, there are um, two free patterns using, using this yarn. This is a DK weight yarn. Uh, it's really, really soft. It's 100% merino, 218 yards. Uh, but on her website, and also I believe on, on the Arkansas Yarn Company website, you can download a pattern. And I really like that they put, it's, it's a hat pattern, and they give a knit version of a hat, and they give a crochet version. So they have not forgotten the crocheters. So I really like like that they did that. I don't know if I will use this for the hat pattern or not. Um, it's cute, but um, I may use this for a cowl that I have in mind. So we'll, we'll see what, what this becomes. But um, I haven't read this yet, but I'm really anxious to. Uh, I think I shared in either episode one or two or one of those early ones that um, I just love all things yarn. I love everything about yarn, knitting, crocheting, everything, including reading books that have to do with it or talk about yarn stores. Um, so uh, just talking about how I was glad that, that they had a crochet pattern for a hat. Um, back when I was a crocheter and before I started knitting, you know, I knew there were some books on about knitters, um, you know, some fiction books, but I discovered that there is a crochet series out there too. So I was really glad as a crocheter that you know, there was, there was somebody talking the crochet language too. So this, this is the first in a series. This is called Hooked on Murder. So um, think Hallmark Channel, you know, Murders and Mysteries. So pretty tame. Yeah, nothing, nothing too scary or anything. So this is by Betty Hechtman. And this is a series that I have really enjoyed. Just really light reading, but you know, they intersperse the yarn, the yarn talk in there. So that's really fun. And just while we're on the topic of books, uh, Maggie Sefton is a primarily a knitting knitting murder mystery <laughs> again. And I know uh, Knitting Natty of the Love and Stitches podcast. I believe she was reading one of these this summer. Um, so again, just it's light reading, it's fluff. Um, but a lot of times these come with either recipes and or patterns into. So you get. A fun little story and then you get you know maybe a pattern or a recipe in there so that that one is called knit one kill two by Maggie Sefton and there are a number of these books and then the last one I I know I shared before but this is probably my favorite series by Sally Goldenbaum it's the seaside knitters mystery series is that right seaside yeah seaside knitters mystery and um I really, really enjoy this one. Uh, this author is very vivid in her descriptions. It's a, I believe, like a New Eng uh, Cape, Cape Side town, uh, New England. It's in Massachusetts, Sea Harbor, Massachusetts. Uh, just the description of the area, the description of foods they eat, the description of the yarns, the yarn stores, the characters. Um, I just find her to be a really a really good author of this type of, of fiction and it's just really enjoyable to read and to follow these characters and so there are a number of these books as well if you're ever looking for some fun light-hearted reading and if you are as crazy about yarn and all things yarn related as I am maybe you would enjoy some of those books too um, so uh, let me just share quickly that with that skein of yarn and book came a little stitch marker and it's the state of Arkansas and it's it's kind of a tealy aqua color and it has sparkles it's an, I think an acrylic made and I, I know the camera I can't show this but on there is etched some little flowers and it is just so pretty so that pretty little sparkly progress keeper or stitch marker uh last Oh, I hope I didn't show that already in the basket. Um, but uh, just today in the, in the mail came my uh, June installment of the self-striping sock 
club that I have been purchasing this year. This is by Knitterly Things, so you never know what you're going to get. This is the June 2021 colorway, so if you don't want to see it, look away. It is called Collide, and it's on the sparkle base. Um, I think this is going to be a very fun colorway to knit up for fall. Uh, this doesn't remind me really of anything in June, and I'm not sure exactly where the name came from, but I am thinking this would be really fun to knit up this fall. So we'll see. I have a lot of yarn to knit up, I know. <laughs> so that is it for what showed up in my mailbox. Uh, just a little bit of chatter. We have been uh, to our local pool a few times. Our daughter Jenna works as a lifeguard. She's doing great. Uh, we have gone to our nearby lake, which is about 25 minutes to a half hour away, and gone in the lake swimming, which has felt really good. Not really good sailing lately. The wind has been not very strong at all. It's been in the single digits, so not good for sailing, but the lake feels really good when it's hot, so <laughs> we've enjoyed that. Uh, coming up, we have 4th of July, so happy early 4th of July. Uh, 4th of July is celebrated big in our town. We're known as a 4th of July city. Um, we're not a big city. Um, I think of us more as a town. There's about 7,000 uh, population-wise in my town, uh, but we do, we do up 4th of July really big. There's activities from I think 6 or 7 a.m. in the morning until the big fireworks display at night. So we are looking forward to um, getting, getting in some of those activities. Uh, there's a, a craft show, there's a car show, um, different groups in the area put on different performances. There's, you know, huge uh, food vendors. Um, and of course, fireworks, you can get fireworks to shoot off at your house and then the big firework display at night. So it's it's going to be a really, a really fun, fun time. So that's that's kind of what we're up to right now. Looking forward to that. Uh, let's see. Um, I just wanted to tell you, I'm not going to have an episode up next week. I'm going to take a week off. Um just need to regroup a little bit, maybe get some house house cleaning done. <laughs> so no no episode next week, but then there should be episode 20. We're coming on episode 20 in the next in the in about two weeks. Um, I'm going to open on Ravelry and ask me anything thread. So if you have any questions for me, if you'd like to know anything. Uh, within reason, um, please feel free to go over to Ravelry and, you know, post post your questions. I'd be uh, happy to answer some of those questions on that next episode. Uh, if you don't use Ravelry, you sure can just send me a message on Instagram as well, and I can, I can get those questions from there just as easily. Uh, if you liked this video, I'd appreciate it if you give it a thumbs up, and if you haven't subscribed already, uh, I'd love it if you'd consider subscribing. Um, with that, I think that is all. I hope um, some more of you will join in the Merry Make-Along. Uh, so hop on over to Ravelry or start working on some of those knitting and crochet projects or other things for Christmas. Uh, hope you all are doing well. And uh, whatever you're doing, knitting, crocheting, or any making, I hope you are enjoying your summer. And with that, I will say goodbye and hope to see you real soon. Take care.